On the backbone of the continent, 10,000 feet above sea level and miles from a railroad, stands the village and mill of the Aztec gold mine. From dark caverns, men push cars of precious ore. Machinery picks up the load where the men leave it, and a diesel engine and cable take the cars on a dizzy ride up the mountainside and into the tipple. The ore is loaded into trucks by gravity and hauled across the ridge to the mill. Each load is dumped into a large hopper from which mine cars are filled to supply the mill. A giant crusher pulverizes the ore. An agitator stirs a great mud pie to hasten the settling process and allow the heavy yellow flakes to sink to the bottom to be trapped on the washing table. Behind the scenes, two 125 horsepower Caterpillar diesel engines drive all the mill machinery at a fraction of former cost. These famous power plants also help recover black as well as yellow gold. In the Texas oil fields, we find four engines working on a single well. Two 160 horsepower units operate the draw works and rotary drill, while a pair of 125 horsepower diesels are hooked in tandem to the mud pump. The four units, developing a total of 570 horsepower, are operating on 75 cents worth of fuel an hour. A Kansas driller found a pair of eight-cylinder diesels with their 320 horsepower could handle the draw works and the mud pump on a well near Great Bend. In the southern Illinois field, two six-cylinder engines drive the slush pump, draw works, and rotary rig on 36 cents worth of fuel an hour. V-belts are used on the slush pump, while the rotary drill and draw works are operated by a chain drive and transmission from the dual connected engines. This spudder, working in the Kansas oil fields, is powered by a 125 horsepower engine that is operating on five and a half cents worth of fuel an hour. Four diesel power units find another profitable job in the oil fields powering Gardner Denver pumps on a pipeline near Houston, Texas. Water is pumped as efficiently as oil. The city of Ava, Missouri changed from electricity to diesel power to keep the municipal water tank full and two 44 horsepower engines cut the pumping bill $167 a month. Sand pumping is another ideal job for diesel power and a 160 horsepower unit operates a dredge and washer on five and a half gallons of six cent fuel an hour. Only one sixth the cost of former power. A diesel engine was installed on a hydraulic dredge in Florida to generate current for three electric motors totaling 90 horsepower. Three gallons of five cent fuel keeps this stream of mud flowing for an hour. The towboat Panama is one of the familiar sights along the Memphis waterfront. And its 125 horsepower Caterpillar diesel engine is right at home, pushing heavy barges up and down the Mississippi. This is only one of the many installations in fishing and towboats. Uh, here's another river, the Clearwater in northern Idaho, where the United States Bureau of Public Roads bought a shovel powered with a six-cylinder diesel to build a new scenic highway. In the neighboring state of Washington, the United States Forest Service had another difficult road to construct. A link belt shovel was purchased to make the heavy cuts. It was also powered by a Caterpillar diesel, the engine that is used by the 20 largest builders of excavators. P&H is another manufacturer that uses these diesel engines in its shovels, drag lines, and pile drivers. The roller is one of the oldest and most useful tools in road building, and Buffalo Springfield has long been one of its leading manufacturers. Now, diesel economy has been added to the dependability and efficiency that are associated with these machines, so power costs are reduced more than half. On a Louisiana rice plantation, a veteran power unit has piled up a great record. For six years, it has run 24 hours a day during the three-month growing season, driving a deep well pump. 
It has more than 10,000 hours to its credit and is still pumping a full 2,000 gallons of water every minute. Diesel serve the cotton farmer as well as the rice planter. In Georgia, this four-stand gin averages a bale of cotton on each gallon of low-cost fuel. Its D13,000 engine delivers a maximum of 125 horsepower to the belt. So the bales are produced at the rate of one every 12 minutes. Five bales an hour at a fuel cost of only six cents a bale. When cotton becomes shirts and dresses, it is bound to find its way into the laundry bag sooner or later. At the Rigdon Laundry in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, the tubs, dryers, mangles, and even the rug cleaners are driven by a four-cylinder Caterpillar diesel engine, direct connected to a 60 kilowatt generator. The Carver Lace Works in New York City uses a three-cylinder engine to power a 36 kilowatt generator through a belt drive. The unit operates 16 hours a day and is saving $200 a month driving the intricate looms that weave fine thread into finer lace. Another New York manufacturer installed an 80 horsepower diesel engine to drive all the machinery in its rubber factory. 13 cents worth of fuel runs the whole plant for an hour, so it's not hard to understand why fuel savings are paying for the installation. Now, if you want to figure it another way, a ton of finished rubber is produced daily at an out-of-pocket power cost of $1.30. How's that for economy? Another plant uses a 160 horsepower diesel and large Gardner Denver compressor to supply compressed air for drills, sandblasts, and hoists all over the factory. Grain elevators have been quick to sense the advantages of diesel power. Cars are no sooner spotted and the powerful engine sets the machinery in motion. Now this power plant costs nothing when it is idle. It has the appetite of a pygmy and the power of a giant, power that loads cars in record time. Swift and Company is also proving the advantages of diesel power at its poultry buying station in Dexter, Missouri. A 60 horsepower engine drives two ammonia compressors that hold the cold storage rooms at exactly the right temperature for premium poultry and eggs. Uh, here's another kind of refrigerating unit, a railroad car in which a 160 horsepower diesel drives a filter compressor to manufacture ice for railroad cars. The ice drops from a trap door, takes the elevator, slides around a chute, and drops into the bunkers at the end of the car to write another chapter in the magic of modern refrigeration. The Kilgore Pharmacy of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, like every other drugstore, has plenty of use for electricity. A diesel-powered generator runs everything from the lights to the ice cream machine on $1.50 worth of fuel per 18-hour day. Schools and other public buildings are joining the worldwide swing to diesel. The David Rankin Trade School in St. Louis installed a three-cylinder engine that drives a 25-kilowatt generator on one gallon of seven-cent fuel an hour. Aviation is going diesel. On the emergency landing field of the Army Air Corps at Dryden, Texas, a 20-kilowatt generator set supplies all the electricity for boundary lights, floodlights, beacons, and the airman's greatest ally, radio. Carnivals and circuses have joined the diesel parade. Each year sees more shows equipped with portable powerhouses that speed across the country under their own power, yet can be generating current two minutes after they reach their destination. And so, from circuses to gravel plants, from great cities to remote mountain passes, Caterpillar diesel engines are finding an ever-widening field of usefulness. In six short years, tens of thousands of them have been sold. Over 100 manufacturers have adopted them, 
at standard power for their products. Why? Simply because they do so many tasks better and more economically than they have ever been done before. Thank you.